Venus and Aphrodite by uh, Bet Bethany Hughes. Uh, by a biography of desire. So Venus and Aphrodite, the um, kind of go-to for anything like love related, love relationship related. And um, to me, it's just like, I almost got it like at points that she was like almost merging them or going more towards Aphrodite than Venus yeah um, but there is there is that separation of the two but I just felt that at points but to me overall it really is a nice look at um, looking at these two goddesses over a period of time and the worship and connection people had towards them and their effect over like thousands of years so like and you do get images placed throughout of like different painting statues and whatnot you get like information of like goddess worship through stuff like perfume jewelry um, different places of worships for them um, homework him to Aphrodite talked about so like you get records of them through history um, like uh, Cyprus Greece um, Rome into Egypt with Cleopatra so um, temples like sex like workers um out in the temples both um boys and women um like brothels like um etc so um you do get a little bit of that talked about so um but that's how they um but but that's how the civilizations had worshiped the, worship them at that time so um might seem off to um, some readers today, but that's um, what the worship was like at that time. Um, Rome and Venus, Cleopatra, like I said, artwork, like uh, the most famous the Birth of Venus um, painting. So, like, how um, they're as individuals and um, together, like, they are, like I said, like, they're one goddess, but they are separate um, their own separate entities, own separate goddesses. So you get, like, the pre-Christian um, worship, then going into the Middle Ages, where it's kind of, like, almost lull <laughs> um, but moving out of that and then going into like the 1900s so like hundreds a few thousand years no a few hundred years of um, worship whether it be um, or knowing whether it be publicly privately or um, different views on them so like it, the book it does have um, give you a look at how they were viewed um, how they were um, worshipped how they're depicted later on so um, So like Aphrodite assisted by two Horai goddesses rep representing the seasons emerges from the sea on the Ludovici throne. Um, this relief was almost certainly originally made uh, circa 480 BC for temple in La Grai in modern day Calabria. 
So, um, kind of things. So, like the statues, so like the Canadians left their nude version of the goddess, the nearby island of Kos and the incidentally also chose um, to order a life-size Aphrodite from uh, Paxalis, although Kos version was clothed, the lightly painted and buffed marble goddess of Kanos became a Kos celebre. Um, The afterlife of Aphrodite as Venus in the Roman world uh, reveals much about the role that desire plays in the human story. Venus was a cent was central to the Roman narrative. Um, this is no coincidence. Indeed, it is critical. Um, the premier myth history concerning the Roman goddess of love can be summarized thus: Aphrodite, Venus, as as was her wont, enjoyed a night of passion with an attractive bit of, bit of rough mortal, the Trojan shepherd um, in Antony's. Um, so there, like, it's there, like, you can see she's kind of, um, the authors kind of merged them to, like, one. Um, Venus with her violent love origins her, and her choice of the war god Aries Mars as a lover was a proper deity for Rome to take up with. The early Roman tribes people had long worshipped a local fertility deity, Venus, a kind of homegrown Aphrodite. So, um, Julius Caesar, Cleopatra. So, um, Bonicelli's Venus and Mars does exactly that. Venus re here represents the feminine virtues of grace and beauty, overcoming the destructive uber male passions of Mars, the god of war. Uh, so going into like the Renaissance paintings and everything. Um, but yeah, like if you do have an interest in the more historical um, growth of Venus and Aphrodite, this can be um, of some reference resource. Um, it's not a total, like to me it's not a total, total in-depth of them, it's more uh, a collection of um, points and um, items throughout history that are a representation of, um, of the two. So yeah, a bit of a history, um, as the subtitle says, a biography of desire, so, and it does do that, so. Um, yeah, Venus and Aphrodite. Happy readings.